Hello everyone, my name is Ezra, and you're watching Ale Smoke 15. Eels Mo 15. Now this here is our 1999 John Deere 4200, and we have a brush hog with it that we just bought from Orson's. Um, I'm actually not really sure what it is. <laughs> and today what I'm going to be doing is showing you guys uh, brush hogging. Uh, just giving you tips and tricks. Um, if you've never brush hogged before, um, just something to look out for. It's pretty simple for the most part. Um, I brush hogged multiple, multiple times on this property, but I've actually never recorded it. So I thought, hey, this is a perfect opportunity. Um, so without further ado, let's get the show on the road. All right, so let's just go over the tractor and some easy things. Um, just to kind of understand what we're doing with. Obviously, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to have a tractor. We're going to have to have a brush hog. That's pretty straightforward. Um, this brush hog requires, I think, 24 horsepower uh, to run at necessary speeds. Um, and this is a 25 horsepower tractor. I learned actually the other day that to be considered a tractor, it needs to be 25 horsepower or up. Um, and then obviously other things, but um, I guess it's a king cutter. So let's go over some terminology over this brush hog. This is the tail wheel. Basically what this is, is to kind of take the weight off uh, of the brush hog. Um, now you'll be doing... All of your lifting with the three-point hitch. And I will show you how the tail wheel is supposed to operate uh, in a little bit once we start on the tractor. This here is your actual mounting point where you have your tractor attached. Now, we have our Harbor Freight quick hitch on here. Uh, I don't remember if I ever made a video on that. But basically, we just hooked it up to our two bottom arms in that top link. And it basically is just two hooks, latches on, and you're good to go. Now, we've had to do a few mods to this top link, um, but basically, most most of you guys, um, I'm, I'm not, actually not too sure, if you guys have a quick hitch, it should mount up, not all of them do, we had to do something different because this is a Harbor Freight quick hitch. Uh, many times though, there will be, this, this here is just a pin that goes through this, and we have a spacer on this pin. However, what what's designed, like, the normal thing is supposed to happen is that you're supposed to take this and then slide it over that thing and then you drop a pin through it. You can kind of see that spacer right here, or that punch right there through. And that's where you normally drop, like, an O-ring pin and snap it in place. And there's one on the other side. Now, I realized I never made a video on this hydraulic top link, um, but we have a hydraulic top link. Um, it actually works really well with uh, brush hogging and as well as box plating, um, but I never had that thing. So, you might have just a regular twisting, I'll show you guys. You guys might have a regular uh, top link like this, where it mounts to the tractor and to the implement itself, and you have to physically adjust it by twisting it. It's a spiral, one's clockwise, one's counterclockwise, I don't remember which is which. Anyway, your top link is what's going to be doing, um, keeping your, your implement level so with otherwise it would just lift up and down but the top wouldn't come with it so it would just kind of like is i'm not really sure how to explain it but it's kind of like it wouldn't lift properly so that top link is what helps you with that now this is really what's going to be doing all of your work of actually brush hogging itself this is something called the pto which stands for power takeoff um so PTO shaft, power takeoff shaft. Um, what it basically does is that you hook it up uh, to your P, uh, PTO on your tractor. That is a five. Oh, let's zoom in. Um, that is a 540 um, PTO. Now, on really bigger tractors, which most of you guys who have an actually 1,000 shaft might know, but this is a 540 shaft. That's a 540 PTO. Um, and what it does, it just spins, just spins that gearbox, which then spins the blades underneath. And that's pretty much it uh, in terms of the brush hog itself. Um, they will be different sizes. Some of them will be frontier. Some of them will be actual bush hog. Some, this is a king cutter. Um, I really like this flex hitch that king cutter provides. It's very nice. Um, but that's just my opinion. 
Um, on some brush hogs, there's going to have a um, chain that goes along the right there. We're supposed to technically have some, but we just never went out and bought some yet. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's supposed to be chains so when it's cutting stuff up, it doesn't bounce back and hit you in the face, which may or may not have happened to me. Um, it's supposed to be the same thing in the back. Um, but yes, that is basically it. I do have some chain around this plastic shaft because this plastic shaft is not going to spin, um, but the shaft inside is going to spin. So this is going to keep it away from any vines. Uh, we have several vines on our property that, that can get wrapped around it. So it just kind of keeps it off, kind of keeps this really fast spinning PTO safe. Um, and I'll go over one last thing before we start, but I'm going to go into the tractor side of things. Now, our tractor has a 420 loader. Um, it's just a basic old loader. Um, it, this is actually the hydraulic piston that I broke. I uploaded a small video on it. Um, but that's not necessarily... This is not needed for brush hogging. This is something you can use for gravel. or Basically, loaders are so versatile. I actually came home from school, and I saw that my dad had been pulling something out with the chain. Um, but it's not necessary for it. All right, so I'm putting some diesel in the tractor right now. Um, let's just go over some controls. So we are going to have at least three main controls um, that we're going to be talking about. On this tractor, four. Um, so this here is my hydraulic top link controller. Now this could be used for any kind of hydraulic remote. We have it right now set for our hydraulic top link that we set up. Um, you guys may not have a hydraulic top link. It could be different for every tractor. Um, you guys probably just have a twist, or maybe you do have a hydraulic top link. Um, but since today, we're going to be using this hydraulic top link to control that. And that'll basically control the pitch of the brush hog, uh, this way. Um, then we have our three-point hitch lift, which is going to be this lever right here on our tractor. You guys will probably have to find your three-point hitch left on your own tractor. And I can't tell you where that is because there's so many different tractors out there. Most of the time on John Deere's that I've seen, they're usually on this right side. Um, I'm not sure about other brands, but I know they're usually pretty obvious where they are. And this one, yeah, this one even marks where it is. Um, I'll throw that upside down for you guys so you can read that. Um, but anyway, it's pretty straightforward what the three-point hitch lift is. Now, to turn on the PTO, this is my little white lever here. Now, PTO turn-ons could be really... They kind of vary all over the place, no matter the brand. Um, John, On my John Deere right here, that's that's where it is. Um, it's just a lever you throw forward, it turns it on. I've seen some PTOs on here. I've seen see some PTOs on that side. I've, some, I've seen some PTOs on the ground. It's all over the place. Now, there's one more lever that we're really going to be concerned about. It's this lever right here. Now, this is my range lever. Now, when we're brush hogging, you want to be in your lowest range, especially if you guys have um, a hydrostatic like I do. Um, the reason being is that it allows you to have as much power you can send to that and having a good, decent speed. There's a few reasons why. Um... You want to have your lower speed uh, because it, the way the hydraulics work in this tractor is that you have to, this is a hydrostatic of course, so you have to be able to run the, hydro, the hydraulics to run the tractor as well as be able to run that, which I remember talking about in my adding hydraulic video, adding hydraulic fluid oil video, um, that there are hydraulic stuff going on in there. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff that I've learned about the rock shaft and all that stuff. Um, rock shaft being the actual thing that lifts up. This is your rock shaft. And it varies. It, it looks very on different tractors. Um, but basically, you want to have it low as you can go um, on like stick shift um, tractors, really. You might want to have it in A, but let's say A1 on your tractor is like a crawl, even at your necessary speeds. Um, which I'll go over in a second what that is. Um, it could be really, really slow. So you might want to adjust your actual speeds, but still stay in A. So let's say um, A2 is a good speed for you. Um, it really depends on the speed. Now, if you guys have a speedometer, then you might say this is a crawl or whatnot. 
Um, and I mentioned this thing right here, so I'll hop on the tractor. So this is my tachometer. It goes up to 3,000 RPMs. Okay, it's just a little inline three diesel. Um, and this little mark right here is where you're going to keep your needle at or your RPMs when you're brush hogging. That's kind of the sweet spot of how the horsepower works on how fast that um, PTO shaft is spinning. Um, because the faster your engine spins um, is the faster this thing. So your PTO speed is based off your engine speed. So the faster you're spinning, the faster it's going to cut and probably the better it is. However, you don't want it spinning too fast um, due to the fact you don't want to overwork your engine or sometimes your brush hog can't handle it. Um, but yeah, so I think the diesel is almost done. I'm not in a super big rush to... Oh, <laughs> I never opened that. I thought that was opened. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, why is it taking so long? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and grease up the tractor. And then once that diesel's full, I'll take you guys over to the part where I'm going to brush hug. And I'll show you how to do it. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and start the tracker, and I'll show you guys the controls. Um, but I'm not sure how well my camera, or my, my camera, my mic's going to pick up. So I'm just going to go on basically the editor and uh, show you guys there. All right, so the first thing I'm doing is engaging my uh, RPMs to the correct PTO speed. I showed a picture of that little mark on the dashboard earlier, and I'm just setting my needle to where that mark was on my tachometer. Now right here, I'm using that three-point hitch lever to raise and lower the brush hog. This will really be used for when you're done brush hogging, or you just want to pass a spot and you don't want to cut, or you just want to lift it. You don't really want to have the brush hog on the ground. That is the lever you use to lift. This lever that I'm using right now is really used for only the hydraulic uh, remote that I have, but that is the lever I'm using for adjusting the pitch of the brush hog, and you can see that now happening on screen. Now to engage the brush hog, you want to be able to lower your RPMs all the way as low as they can go and then engage the PTO shaft. This is crucial, otherwise you might shear a shear pin. If you have a slip clutch, it may not be as important, but it's still wise to be able to lower your RPMs as low as you can go before you engage your brush hog. Now for you guys who have loaders, the way to lift the loader is basically to pull back to lift up, push forward to lower down push away towards you to curl the bucker outwards and pull it towards towards you to curl in. Now that we got those controls mastered down, let's go do some brush hogging. Alright, so one last thing I forgot to mention, um, I, I actually said I was going to talk about it in the beginning of the video, but I forgot. So, the pitch of your brush hog is very important. Just because I have a hydraulic top link, um, I can uh, easy on the fly, um, makes it a little bit easier. However, if you guys do have something where you have to physically twist it, um, it is very important that you set your uh, brush hog to the correct, pit, correct pitch. You do not want the bottom of your brush hog to be even with the ground. The reason being is because you want your materials to throw it in the back. So usually you want the back of your brush hog to be a little bit higher than the front of your brush hog and that's on purpose. So when content goes into the brush hog, it'll chop it up and then spit it out the back. And because it's a little bit um, higher to the back, it'll be able to spit it out easier. One thing also I need to mention is that when you set it that way, make sure your tail wheel is just barely on the ground. Its design is to basically kind of help with the weight, but it's not supposed to hold its weight. It can, but the tractor's three-point hitch is supposed to be able to carry all the weight and that thing kicking in every so often when it needs to. All right, 
let's get the show on the road. All right, so here's the area I'm gonna be brush hogging today. Um, I'm a, since I'm at school, at college now, I'm not really here to maintain the property, so it's kind of overgrown. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna be cutting this down. Could I technically cut this with a lawnmower? At the state, yes. However, um, brush hog's gonna be cutting a lot more taller grass, and a lawnmower is gonna be really designed for your yard. You'll really beat up your mower by doing this stuff all the time, while the brush hog is designed to cut this stuff and even stuff way higher. You'll have to look at your owner's manual to see what your brush hog is capable of and the size and diameter of trees you'll be able to cut. Uh, our brush hog can cut around that, but I've kind of cheated and cut a little bit bigger. <laughs> uh, but still, I would go underneath the specs of what your brush hog can do. So let me bring the tractor around and I'll show you guys how to do it. Alrighty, so I've arrived in the area that I want to brush hog. I lower my RPMs as low as I can go, uh, and as of right now, I'm shifting my get re ranges into my lowest gear as I can. Uh, and then I can engage my PTO as my RPMs are all the way down. I then again will go ahead and lower my brush hog and then put my RPMs up to the 540 speed. Now as I do this little area here, um, I'm just making a quick little circle. Now when I come back to my original pass, I want to make sure to overlap the brush hog just a little bit, uh, just to give myself a little bit of grace, and I continue to overlap. If you ever mowed a lawn, it's basically the same thing. If you don't, if you just go straight to the edge, then you might leave a little bit of grass sticking out. Uh, now as of here, I back up and then go ahead and turn really sharp. The reason I do that is to demonstrate um, my really tight steering. Many, many tractors have two brakes. One the left tire and one the right tire. Um, this is really helpful, especially in brush hogging, where you can just lock up that one wheel turn really sharp. You can see me doing this now. Um, and be able to just turn in really sharp areas like that. Now before I continue the video any further, even though it's almost finished, I do want to talk about how I just backed up right there to finish that little uh, patch that I had. Now, just because I had a little sp patch is okay to back up a little bit. However, if you have a lot of material, just be very cautious. Now you are pushing all that discharged grass towards you, towards the tractor. Now, depending on the kind of material or how what kind of terrain you're in, this could be a hazard and bounce back and hit you. I've had this happen before, and it hurts. Um, so just be cautious when you back up. Try to go forward when you can, but when you have a little spot like that where it's easier to back up, um, that's okay too. Backing up is also a helpful procedure when you can't exactly get the tractor to go forward. I do this a lot of times when I brush hog my trails where I can't drive forward because the tractor will get the way, but I need to still brush hog, and if I back in, that the brush hog would do what I need to do. Just be cautious when you back up. All right, guys, so that's pretty much my video on how, on tips and tricks you should know while brush hogging. If you like this content, be feel to ring the not notification bell so you guys are aware of the next video. I actually do have some new videos coming up um, that I had some ideas for, so hopefully I can record those here pretty soon and upload those uh, shortly after. Thank you guys so much for watching Gilsmo15. This is Ezra, signing off.